Hi! Ever tried to create the logic for a huge map in Godot Engine via GDScript? Then you probably struggled with the performance. One option to improve this is utilizing the thread node to benefit from multi-threading. I will show you a simple but scalable example for creating the map logic via an array with the use of thread instead of the usual nested loop. The code is already typed, so when Godot 4 is available, it will also benefit from the performance boost coming from the type to rewrite. Let's jump into the code. In the first step, we need to define some member variables. These are split into two parts. First to define the data for the multi-threading, which are the number of threads, a counter for the finished threads and an array as a container for the thread nodes. Second variables are related to the map logic, which are the size of the map, a counter for the lines finished and an array which will be transformed into a 2D array to hold the map logic. Within the ready method, we create the threads via a loop based on the number of threads member variable and also call the function mapgen y for the line creation and passing the index as an argument. But before we jump into the thread logic, we have to make sure that all threads are finished before the node containing the threads is leaving the scene tree. Otherwise there could be unexpected behaviors and crashes for the program. To do this, we have to override the exit tree method with the same loop but checking if the threads are still running and if yes, we need to call the method wait to finish to join the thread and wait for it to finish. Now let's have a look into the thread logic in the mapgen y function. This part is still running in the main thread and represents the lines of the map. And every time it's called, it will create a line. As a thread can only accept one argument, we need to create another array. In my example, a pool int array. This will contain the data required within the thread, the thread ID and the actual y value of the y counter member variable. Now we can start one of the threads from the thread array based on the index and calling the function mapgenx with the argument thread data. Last step, the y counter must be incremented to prepare for the next line. The function mapgenx will now run in one of the created threads and is executed via multi-threading. I prefer to create an own array within the thread for the x data of the line, so the thread is totally independent of the map array. In addition, we use the passed y counter value for the y variable, which will be needed for your further map chain logic. Then run through a loop for the columns and perform the map gen logic. After that, we need to call the map gen thread finished function, passing the thread data as argument. Please be aware that this must be done via call deferred, as we switch back to the main thread and need to ensure that it's not busy with other operations. And finally, return the map x array. Back in the main thread and in the function map gen thread finished, we have to ensure via wait to finish that the thread which called the function has finished. The method wait to finish will also return the value of the thread, in our case the map x array, which will be appended to the map array and transforms it into a 2D array. And as a thread finished, we increment the corresponding counter, followed by a if statement checking if the map size y value has not been reached. If so, we decrement the thread's finished counter and call the map gen y with the index out of the thread data to start the next line and next thread. If the map size y value was already reached, we need to check if there are still running threads. As every running thread will call this function, we simply compare the thread's finished counter with the thread's number. The last finished thread will get true to this if statement, which means the map gen is finished and we can proceed with the game logic, in my example represented by the next steps function. That's it. You will see a great performance boost depending on the available CPU cores. But please be aware that this technique will create certain obstacles, just the most critical three of them. Number one, the code will be a hell lot more complicated. Number two, you need to understand what is thread safe or how to code around. Number three, the debug monitor won't provide data. Usually the running project simply crashes 
providing some data in the console. For the last issue, I recommend that you create the logic code without the multi-threading by simply calling the function instead of the start method of the thread node until you've got a bulletproof version. You can find the most important parts of the code in the video description. And now, famous last words, only use performance optimizations if really needed. See you next time and have a nice day. Bye.